Reddit. What random act of kindness motivated you to pay it for? Story 1. 19 years old, incredibly sketch looking. Long hair, beard, piercings, the works. And I was with my best friend on a trip to New York from Vancouver, Canada. We were staying in Times Square, but we went to a concert in Long Island and ended up taking really late transit home. Enter the crackheads. A man and a woman clearly addicted to sweets get on the train and sit across from my scrawny pale friend and my equally scrawny white self and start to inexplicably pick a fight with us, accusing us of making fun of them or something. I don't know. Probably just an excuse to beat the cow out of us and maybe take whatever we have on us. The man becomes physically threatening when out of nowhere, an exceptionally large, probably 400 pounds plus, black man with a thick New York accent says, Out of the way, fatty needs a seat to me temporarily diffusing the situation. He then proceeds to pull jawbreakers out of his pocket and hands them to my friend. And I, while telling a story of the jawbreakers he used to steal from kids at school. When the crackhead gets belligerent again, the huge dude instantly changes the topic to his current bodyguard job and tells stories of smashing people's faces into cement walls and putting bad people into the hospital. The crackhead shut the fudge up and got his girlfriend off of the train at the next stop and we rode the rest of the way back to the hotel with this awesome dude talking about our favorite candies and the fastest ways to get to the center of a jawbreaker. Very welcoming first night in New York. Massive black bodyguard feeds me candy, protects me from crackhead. Story 2. When I was younger, I had abusive parents, like really abusive parents. One night in the middle of a snowstorm, they threw me outside in the snow with no shoes or socks and in a chert. It was freezing cold. I was wandering around the neighborhood behind the houses because I was too embarrassed. Suddenly, a neighbor of mine, 17-ish, was sitting on his window smoking and looking at the snow. He saw me, asked what the hell I was doing. I just gave him this look and he leaned out his window, grabbed me by the arms and hauled me up into his window. He gave me some blankets and let me sit there in the warmth for a while, and we just small talked and he put on a movie. A little while later, my mother came by, saw him and asked if he had seen me. He instantly, without hesitating, told her no and watched until she left before helping me back home. At the time, it was the kindest thing anyone had ever done for me. The only person who had ever protected me from my abusive parents. Since then, I've always been doing my best to help my friends and acquaintances from their abusive families or relationships. Pay that cow forward. Story 3. When I was in 8th grade, my mother tried to commit for the first time and I was too ashamed to tell anyone. What I did do was write what happened into the last paragraph of an English essay I turned in later that year. My teacher, who I wasn't particularly close to, pulled me aside after reading the essay and held me as I cried for about an hour. It was extremely cathartic. I never told her anything more that happened, and she never asked. She moved away from my school district the next year, and I have always regretted not staying in touch with her because she saved me from what could have been a very dark spiral. Story 4 I actually did that same thing for a girl at a bar once because some really drunk dude was trying to drag her out the back door into the alley. The kicker here is that I'm also a chick, straight and married but I know what it looks like when a girl is in trouble. I was heading to the back where the bathrooms were and saw her struggling with this slobbering dude. She also seemed like she was too scared to scream or really put up a fight, so I went up, grabbed her hand, pulled her towards me, and palmed the guy hard in the diaphragm. Since he was so drunk, he immediately fell over. The girl gave me a full body hug and ran in the opposite direction towards a bouncer. Dude got immediately escorted out and into the hands some nearby cops. Apparently, this wasn't the first time this guy had done this to random girls at the bars, but hopefully, it was his last. Story 5. I didn't have the best childhood. My adoptive father has some unconventional parenting methods, and so I used to cry a lot. On one such occasion, I was sitting on a park bench, crying softly to myself. I was trying to be discreet, but I couldn't have been more than 11 or 12 at the time. An old lady sat at the other end of the bench, and we sat in relative silence for a few minutes. I would sniffle occasionally, but I was trying to be quiet. She clearly noticed me wiping my eyes and asked me if I was okay. I told her I was, but she insisted on taking me to a nearby coffee cart and buying me a cup of hot chocolate. It was winter. It was the nicest thing she could have done for me, and it was really nice to know that someone cared. On an unrelated note, you should cross-post this to uh -uh, Let's Not Meet. Story 6. I was in a foreign country, so I didn't have a car, and it was a weekend of a public holiday, so there was very little public transportation. A friend and I had gone to explore the city, managed to walk quite a distance from our hotel. While we were out over an hour away, it started raining harder than I remember seeing. It was gorgeous when we left, but ridiculously cold and rainy on the way back. My buddy had brought a coat, but I was in a t-shirt. A lady walking down the street towards us with her umbrella stopped me and insisted I take her umbrella. I tried to refuse, but she insisted, telling me that her place was just around the corner. 
I was already drenched, but it sure did help to walk the remaining several miles with an umbrella instead, just my t-shirt. I try to pay it forward by being generous whenever I have something I don't need. Rather than just repaying the one event, I want to be the kind of person that lady was. Story 7. I was an exchange student in Japan. My friends and I were visiting Kobe for the weekend. Of the three of us, I spoke the most Japanese, but even that was intermediate level at the very best. Predictably, we got lost. It was late and cold, and we had nowhere to stay. Hadn't booked a room or anything. We were passing a karaoke place. It's pretty common for someone to be standing outside of these places yelling about deals and shoving flyers at you. We were so desperate at this point that I asked the guy for help finding a place to stay. He tried to describe a place, but even though I could understand most of what he said, we didn't have a map, smartphones, or know any street names, so his directions were useless. The guy paused, looked around, and then started running, waving for us to follow. He personally led three foreigners who had no intention of spending money at his karaoke place through the streets at night, apparently at great risk to himself because he seemed absolutely panicked about getting back to his job quickly, even though he took us right to the door of a place where we could stay. We collected every yen we had and shoved it at the guy, but he threw up his hands, seemed aghast, and wouldn't accept a dime, figuratively speaking. I encountered some cow in Japan, but this guy made up for all of it. Story 8. One grocery week when I was in college, I had my card declined. This was a bit of a problem as the kitchen was entirely out of food and I wasn't going to be paid for another week. It was a really awkward being at the front of the line with $100 worth of groceries having a hasty conversation with my girlfriend about how we were going to deal with this while the guy behind us in line offered to pay for our groceries. I tried to talk him down but he insisted and I was feeling really awkward holding up the line. I thanked him profusely and he told me word for word, just pay it forward if you ever get the chance. Ever since I've been jamming a dollar or two into every donation box I see, tipping an extra 5%, giving my change to the homeless, and otherwise looking for opportunities to pay it forward. Story 9. I was 15 and I owned a moped. It was late and raining and this car did not see me as it turned left across my lane. I was T-boned going about 30 miles per hour. The car hit me right in my left thigh and my upper body hit and rebounded off of the hood. I flew maybe 20 feet before hitting the pavement. My left thigh snapped in two when the car hit me. I'm laying on the ground screaming for help when this guy comes up and kneels down with a knee on either side of my head so I can't move it around. He does his best to keep me calm and keep the rain off of me until the EMS guys show up and put me in traction and take me to the hospital. During that time, the guy is asking me my name and address, making sure I'm coherent. After they took me away, he drove to my parents' house and informed them that I was in an accident and mostly okay and that they should go to the hospital to see me. He wanted to make sure they got there as soon as possible and thought it would be less jarring than the police showing up at their door. I never got a chance to thank him either, but I think about him and his kindness from time to time. I hope one day I can do something similar for someone in distress. Story 10. I've taught a few self-defense classes, and I thought this was important enough to post. Don't ever be afraid to yell for help. If you're afraid, make as much noise as possible. If nobody can help you or you're alone, make the most aggressive, animalistic sounds you possibly can. We teach children who can't physically defend themselves against larger adults, no matter how many strikes we teach them, to growl like a honey badger, fighting a wolverine, fighting a grizzly bear. The goal is to communicate to the attacker one of two things. A. I'm flipping crazy and possibly on crack and you will lose an eye even if you kidnap me. Or B. It is not worth flipping with this crazy. This, I think, is one of the best things you can do if you're physically unable to defend yourself. Also try yelling for help as loudly as you can first, because people might be less likely to try to help you if they see you as a rabid wombat. Story 11. Back when I was going to the local community college, I saw this girl outside of one of the classrooms having a serious breakdown. She was crying, holding her phone in one hand, and pacing back and forth nervously. Out of the blue, while I was walking on my way to class, I said, You look like you need a hug. She was stopped pacing and stared at me for a bit, then gave one one of the most desperate hugs I have ever received. Afterwards, I asked her if there was anything I could do, and she said that she was having a panic attack and just wanted to go home. The problem was that her purse and all of her books were still in the classroom. I offered to go in and get them for her, and her eyes widened like I had just saved her life. So I opened the door and the whole room turned to me. The teacher looked at me with this super skeptical look and asked, Can I help you? As I hadn't really thought it through, I told the first lie that popped into my head. My sister isn't feeling well, so I came by to pick up her things. He just stared at me for a while and pointed at an empty desk. I tried my best to pretend like I wasn't surprised by the purse and her other belongings, and then walked out of the room and handed her her things. She thanked me profusely, and I told her to just take the night off and relax. I never told her my name, and she never told me hers, 
but to this day, there are few things that make me more proud than that random act of kindness. Add it, Reddit gold, thank you, whoever you are. Story 12. Okay, here goes. My SO at the time has a decent walk from the subway every night. On her way home, she notices these two sketchy dudes following her. She hopes that she is just paranoid, but nonetheless continues to walk at a faster pace, and she barely has time to look back a second time that one of the guys has grabbed her purse strap and the other has her grocery bags. She starts yelling at the top of her lungs. From across the street on the second floor, she hears, Hey, you fools! What are you doing? I'm fooling you guys! Out runs this shoeless, shirtless, long-haired metal head with an electric guitar that he is swinging like Conan the Barbarian. Two-handed overhead helicopter swings would be the best decryption. And he is screaming like Braveheart or something similar. The two thugs must have seen the crazed look in this guy's eyes, but they bolted real fast. Upon my GF's return home, she explains what had happened. I had to go and thank this guy in person and shake his hand for being bad peach and avoiding what I assume could have been a tragedy. We actually became friends and went to see a couple live gigs together. Lamb of God and Parkway Drive. I have since done many good deeds with this chivalrous story in mind, and I look forward to my chance to threaten to beat someone with a guitar. Story 13. Mine sounds ridiculous, but this bloke genuinely saved my life. I was very young, probably about four or five, and my parents were about to take me out on my first tricycle. I was sat just outside the gate to my house, waiting for my parents when I had a scumbag brain moment. Hey, Rael, my brain said. Yo, Mr. Mozo, you should totally just lift up your feet. Just lift them up, I did. I should probably mention that my house is on a very steep hill, which leads directly down to a very busy road. It might also help to mention that the wee tricycle had no brakes of any kind. So pretty soon I was shooting down the hill like nobody's business, straight towards the road. I was too frightened to even think straight. My parents were running after me screaming, put your feet down, but I was going too fast. I couldn't hear them and they couldn't keep up with me. Just a few meters from the road, a builder, I think he was a builder, but it was a while ago, was loading up his van. He looked up and saw me. Without a word, he gracefully strode onto the pavement. And as I passed, he swiftly and elegantly reached out, grabbed me, and lifted me from the tricycle, which then rolled over. He set me down on the ground, closed his van, jumped into the front, and drove off. Neither me nor my parents ever got to thank him. Story 14. I was with a friend at a boy club. Both of us are basic, y'all, but we were there because it had better music and we didn't like being hit on by creeper dudes. We are ladies. Some guy starts dancing with me. And, weirdly, I assumed he way boy, and it was all fun and good. My friend goes to the bathroom for a breather break. There's a bunch of couches in there and a vending machine. It's kind of more an entrance to the ladies' room, but it has a door to the entrance too. She's going to be a while, is my point. And he starts dancing a little more roughly, grinding and humping and things that I just don't do. I should mention I don't really go out dancing much. I'm not sure what's normal. This was the second time I've gone out dancing, and the first time was with my boyfriend, and I get really uncomfortable. But I don't want to be a bad person, and I had thought he was boy, so I don't want to make a big deal out of it and just try to move around so he can no longer do that stuff. He continues anyway. Every counter move I make, he starts making others, and he's kind of pushing us towards the corner. Even if my friend came out of the bathroom, I know by now she wouldn't be able to find me. It's really loud, so we can't really talk. Even if I scream, I doubt anyone would hear me. And if they did, they'd think it was a, oh, yeah, scream. The corner is where the seven feet speakers are. And he's grabbing onto my pants so I can't walk away. And I'm trying to push him away, and I've stopped dancing. And I'm trying to get people's attention but they ignore me, and I am still worried that I'm overreacting, so I'm not trying as hard as I should be. I'm looking around, and this girl sees me, and she can see my panic, and she is mouthing something, but I can't really understand it. Strobe lights and darkness, and I'm assuming she's asking if I want help, because she looks concerned. I nod a lot, and she comes over and gets in between this guy and me and starts kissing me. At first, I was really confused, and I think maybe I misinterpret what she was mouthing, and she wasn't asking me if I needed help, but if I wanted to hook up, but the guy goes away, and she leads me to the bathroom. And she says that she didn't know what else to do and hoped that the guy would think she was my girlfriend. I'm not sure what could have happened. Sometimes I still think I may have been overreacting. But then I think about stories where women are assaulted on full subways, and no one does anything. And then I'm really, really grateful to her. I was really scared, but I had the other fear that I was making a big deal out of nothing. So I just didn't know what to do. I'm really grateful to that girl, though. She only had the hint that I wasn't dancing and looked scared. She couldn't hear me or see what he was doing or anything. OP's story really reminded me of this. It was eerily familiar and not fun. Although I'm not even sure if my life or well-being was in danger, I'm just glad it turned out how it did for both of us. Story 15. Hmm. 
It was a dark, cold, and damp Thursday night when I was taking a walk in my suburban neighborhood when I was 13 years old. I often go for walks, especially during night because it feels refreshing, and I like not being able to be seen by people when I walk. Anyways, a dark truck pulls up to me, and the man rolls down the window. Inside is a middle-aged man who made eye contact with me before saying anything. He proceeded to ask me, How are the kids? Not knowing what to do, I thought it must have been someone who lived near me and recognized me. So I tried to be friendly and responded, Ha ha, I'm only 13. He then said, For a dirty mechs, I thought you'd have five by now. I was shocked, partly because of this crude remark by some middle-aged white guy in a truck, and partly because I'm Chinese, not Mexican. I guess during the night he couldn't see me clear enough. Anyways, I felt the situation was getting pretty sketchy, so I started to walk forward. I wanted to cross the street when I noticed that this man was going to follow me. As I tried to cross the street, he sped up and pulled over to block my way. This was when I realized he was up to no good. His headlights were blaring perpendicular to where I was while I was in the complete dark. Out of nowhere, two neighborhood dogs come running towards me. They were two huge half-huskies. I recognized them as my neighbor's dogs that he would often let run around his yard and around the neighborhood without a leash. I had always thought that to be dangerous for the dogs in case of cars, but they never got hit or into any harm. They came dashing towards me, barking so loudly, not an ear in the entire street could have ignored them. That's when the driver pressed his gas pedal full force and tried to get out of there. He thought that the dogs meant that there must have been an owner with them coming to check up on me. However, little did he know that it was just the two neighborhood dogs coming towards me themselves without my neighbor. They had perhaps saved me from being kidnapped or injured by this strange man in his truck. To this day, I'm 16 now, I am super grateful for both of those dogs being there. I try to return the favor by playing with them when our neighbor is busy and keeping them company with treats and dog toys. Story 16. Met a guy on the train to East Germany. We ended up partying the night away, becoming good friends. And I spent Christmas with him, his family, and his ridiculously hot GF. That was the last good meal I had before we deployed to the Gulf. I remember being blown away by how gracious and kind his parents were toward me. Plus, he bought me a New Kids on the Block Christmas album. It was such a catastrophically poor gift, but the thought was there. So now I always invite friends over for holidays. Try to go overboard on gifts to friends. Thanks, Thorsten. Edit. Well, this took an unexpected turn. Thanks to Mark G1 who suggested I try Facebook, I'm now just about reunited with my old friend. I tried different spellings of his last name, I was way the fudge off, and there he was. Unbelievable. Every time I get mad at Reddit for some stupid thing, something like this happens. Jesus! Edit 2. Oh no, he's still a cook! Edit 3. I wish my German skills hadn't disintegrated. Edit 4. He just responded. Yep, he's been looking for me too. He said he and his parents still talk about that Christmas. This is awesome. Story 17. TL Dichter 20. Something girl saved me from being assaulted when I was 15. Since then, I can't be the onlooker. I was 15 years old. Male, by the way. Waiting at a bus stop. This old guy starts chatting with me innocent enough. Then the conversation turns and he asks me if I want to come back to his place for a beer. That is when I knew things were not so cool. I went to leave the bus shelter, but he stood in the entrance, so I kept back as I didn't want to get into his reach. A young woman in her early 20s was walking by and from the look in my eye, she probably saw something was up and pushed the guy aside, grabbed my hand and said, There you are. We thought you were at the other bus stop. Come on, Mom and Dad are just parked over there. She walked me out of the bus stop and back to the restaurant I worked at. That is when I started shaking and freaking out realizing what I just escaped. We called the cops and they were there in minutes. Some of the cops stayed with me and about 10 minutes later, another cop came in to let me know they caught the guy. They said that he was known to police as a predator, but they could not arrest him because he never actually touched me. They did say that they roughed him up so much that he would never be coming back out to our small town and alerted his parole officer of what happened. After that incident, it had a dramatic effect on my life. Obviously, I check a little more often to keep myself safe. But at the same time, I also keep an eye out for others and will always intervene to make sure everything is okay. Examples. 1. At a bar, notice a girl being held back by a guy much larger than me. I stepped in between them to intervene. I ended up getting a sharp punch to the stomach and then a few kicks while I was on the ground. I'm not really a fighter or defender for that matter. But the guy was escorted out of the club by security. I talked with the girl afterwards and apparently it was her ex-BF who was on a restraining order. 2. Left a party to go buy smokes at the corner store. I noticed four guys yelling at and grabbing at a young girl. I called my buddies back at the party to come quick. I'm not an idiot. I would be no match against four guys. They arrive and we intervene. Turns out one of the guys is her older brother, and they are just trying to get his drunk baby sister home. She validated that was the case. So they left all pissed at us, but I have no regrets on that one for crying wolf. 
There are many more stories, but needless to say, that random act of heroism from the 20-something girl who didn't know me, but still put her own self in harm's way changed me for good. I will never be that person to walk by and ignore a stranger in need. Edit for spelling and grammar and to add TLD ajar. Story 18. When I was in college, I was out with some friends at a bar and having too much of a good time. I drank a little bit too much tequila when this creeper guy starts buying the group drinks. We were all a little too messed up up to think of saying no. Plus, you can woo any broke college kids with free booze. He joined our booth and he put his arm around me at some point. Later on, I got up to use the bathroom and obviously did not notice him following me. As I walked into the restroom, a girl was walking out and presumably saw the guy following me in there as she came in about a minute after with the bouncer, catching the creeper trying to break down the stall door. Creeper got thrown out and random woman saved the day. Now, I always make it a point to look out for overly drunk girls at the bar. I've pulled quite a few girls aside to ask them if they were all right, if they were at the bar alone or with friends, and if they knew the guys they were talking to, and put them in cabs if they were not feeling well creeped out. It may cost me money, but I'd hate to be in their situation without help. My fiancé calls me the Bardian Angel. Edit. Wow! Whoever gave me Reddit gold, thank you so much. Story 19. I was 18 and at a pool party in a foreign country with my two best friends. My friends and I had a system when it came to these parties where one of us would stay sober to watch the other two and make sure that nothing bad happened to them. And that night was my night to be sober. I was sitting off to the side of the pool with everyone's purses and watching my friends dance, watching their drinks, etc. While there, I got the attention of a Brazilian man. He sat next to me and our conversation began innocently enough. But eventually, he ended up pinning me to my chair with one arm and asking for a kiss. I kept saying no and trying to flag down my friends, but they were too busy being drunk and having fun. He began kissing me and biting my neck while forcibly holding me down in my chair, and each time I said no, he said, Why do you resist? I was terrified. I thought it was a matter of seconds before getting dragged off into the bushes. A guy saw us, passed by, and then walked around again. He probably saw the terror in my eyes and waltzed up, saying, I hate to bother you, but the lady promised me a dance. The guy scurried off and told everyone at the party I was a tease before following me around and moping the rest of the night. My friends thought and still think it was hilarious, and to this day will tease me by saying I'm a tease. Even when I told them the story, they simply laugh and ask me questions I'll say no to and respond with, why do you resist? I'm happy that at least there was someone there to save me. My savior was going to a UC school, I think San Diego, at the time. So if you're reading this and recognize the situation, thank you so, so much. I always scan bars and parties for girls who are in that situation with every intention of saving them. Story 20. I was at an amusement park, standing in line with my friends and her grandmother, waiting to get on a water ride. It was really hot that day, and we only went on water rides to make sure we stayed cool. As soon as we got in line, I got a headache. Nothing unusual. I get headaches all the time. My friend's parents were a little ways away from the entrance, but not too terribly far. We had gotten halfway through the line, and my head started pounding, and I felt like I was going to throw up. I told my friends I was going to go back. One asked why, and I said I wasn't feeling well. I later found out she didn't hear me. Walking back, I started getting black spots all in my eyes. I had to grab onto the rail to keep my balance and to lead me back to the front. As soon as I got to the entrance, I couldn't stand anymore and fell down at the front while my vision went completely black. I couldn't see anything for a few seconds. About ten people passed me before one guy finally went over to help me stand up. I don't remember standing up. I remember the man putting my arm around his neck and start to lead me back to my family. A bunch of thoughts went through my mind. Can I trust this guy? Is he going to kidnap me? I can't defend myself. I can hardly stand up. He was actually really nice and led me back to my friend's mom and stayed around until the doctors there got to me. I never got to thank him because I hardly had enough breath in me to answer the simple yes and no questions the doctors asked me. I was apparently really dehydrated, but made me realize how little people stop to help people who obviously need it. Story 21. Yesterday morning, I stepped off the tube train at Bank Station, London, to make space for people getting off. Chap beside me stepped backward without noticing the train had stopped on a bend. Instead of the platform, his foot went straight down the one-foot-wide gap. I'm a big bloke, and my mind was on listening to the Mark Kermode movie reviews on my iPod. Somehow I had grabbed this man's arm as he was falling, hauled him upright, and I heard a woman's shriek over my iPod. Chap was okay, nodded his thanks, and the prevailing mood all around was embarrassment. Kermode was reviewing Twilight, incidentally. I fully agree with him about the childish vitriol aimed at the series. Michael Sheen is jolly good in it. Story 22. When I was about 10 years old, I used to go skiing on the weekends with Mobile Ski Club. It was a bunch of kids, anywhere from 8, 16 or so, who would pile on a bus early morning on Saturdays, ski all day, and come back that night. 
They also held overnight trips. I recall the first and only of those trips I went on. I was absolutely terrified. Everyone always seemed to know each other. On the day trips, it didn't bother me so much. But on the impending weekend trip, the consequences of loneliness seemed so magnified. I boarded the bus and sat there doing all I could to not break down crying out of fear and anxiety. An older kid, a snowboarder, still mostly skiers at that time, sat down next to me, which certainly didn't help with my unfounded feelings of inferiority. But he looked down, obviously aware of my situation, and said simply, You scared? Don't worry, man. It'll be all right. I cannot explain how much of a relief those words were. See, he was, in a metaphorical sense, what I was afraid of. Bigger kids. Cooler kids? Probably mean kids. Of course, I still freaked out that night and called my parents, who planned an impromptu family ski trip, came up for the weekend and saved me from, well, nothing really. I never got to thank the guy, and I am sure he had little sense of the impact he made, but it is 23 years later, and I still remember the intense feeling of gratitude. Seriously, I want to give the guy a hug today as much as I did then. Story 23. I was the random good guy once. Here's my story. I was at a bar late one night when a girl I'd never met before came up to me with a man trailing behind her and said in a familiar way, Oh, hey, how's it going? She then immediately whispered, Help, this guy is bothering me. I recognized him. I played the piano at this bar regularly, and he had a habit of following women out of the bar and harassing them. He seemed intellectually off. He had really scared a female friend of mine once. So I played along. Oh, hey, nice to see you, I said. We chatted. She bought me a drink. She took my hat off and posed with it coquettishly. The guy waited impatiently behind her, then eventually slunk off and left the bar. At which point she said, Are you coming home with me or what? Then demanded close relationship favors in exchange for the return of my hat. Anne and kept pointing up under skirt. I believe to indicate that she wasn't wearing panties. Can't say for sure. I didn't double check. I had a girlfriend. I declined and went home. I guess my story has nothing to do with paying it forward, but she made quite an impression. Story 24 I was visiting my sister in Japan. One day while she was away at work, I decided to take her bike and explore the small city she lived in. I was riding along when all of a sudden my back tire blew out. At this point, I was pretty far from her house and I didn't know how to get back home. I started walking with the bike when out of nowhere, a Japanese guy pulled up in his pickup. He got out of the truck, put the bike in the back of the truck, and told me to get in the passenger seat. In broken English, he said he was going to help me. Well, he drove me to a bike shop and took the bike out of the back of the pick and brought it inside the shop. He then proceeded to fix the tire. He apparently was the owner of this bike shop. I paid for the repair and looked around the shop and realized his shop was a block away from my sister's apartment. TLDR, flat tire while riding bike. Nice Japanese man helps me out. Story 25. I saved a guy once. I was coming home from work after dark when this guy on a moped in front of me hit a curb and went spinning out and crashed. I immediately slammed on my brakes and ran out of my car to check on him. He was covered in blood, unconscious, laying in the road in dark clothing. I stayed where I was and called 911, knowing that if anyone came along, they wouldn't see him laying in the road and would run him over. The first car that came almost didn't stop for me either. I called the police as well. About 20 minutes later, the rescue squad shows up. About a dozen of them. It's a volunteer squad in a small local town. Two of them go to check on the guy. Some of them go to monitor traffic. And two of them come over to me and start accusing me of hitting the guy in the first place. They said the grill on my truck was messed up which it was because I hit a deer a month earlier and couldn't afford a cosmetic repair. Finally, the police show up and the rescue squad guys run over to the state trooper to tell him that I had hit the guy. The trooper comes over and questions me, and it was about this time that the guy on the moped sits up in the middle of the road like the undertaker and tries to leave. The trooper goes and talks to him while they put him in the ambulance. The trooper finally comes back to me and I ask him if the guy's okay, to which he responds, Yeah, hard to get hurt when you're as drunk as he is and I was free to go. Thank God that dude was wasted and didn't pass away. If he'd passed away or been sober and couldn't remember, I would have been investigated for stopping to save his life. Story 26. I've told bits of this before in other places, but here it is. When I was 17, I was in a really bad car accident. The kind that when your parents arrive, they have a slight panic attack. I had a car try to cross a highway right in front of me, so impact was at about 65 to 70 miles per hour. Both cars were totaled and had bits scattered all over the highway. My car went spinning through the median and stopped just shy of moving traffic on the other side. A truck driver saw the whole thing happen and stopped. He came to me first, and within moments, someone had stopped for the other driver, so he stayed with me. He helped me call my mom and stepdad on his cell phone, and then helped me away from the wreck to sit. He talked to my mom for me to get her to where I was when I started hyperventilating. He called the police and talked to me in between. When the police arrived, he talked to them until my parents showed up. 
Once my parents took over, he slipped off and went back to driving his route. I know he was late on his delivery because he called them to say he was going to be and why. I vaguely remember thanking him and I know my parents did too. I had called my stepdad's cell phone from the truckers, so my parents had his number. They later called him and thanked him for helping me and he refused any and all gifts they offered. He also helped clean up some of my blood as dangerous as it could have been since he didn't know me. To this day because of him I stop every time I see an accident that doesn't have emergency personnel at it yet. I have a fully stocked first aid kit in my trunk and a couple towels. I've been witness to several accidents and the most awkward one I helped at I was on crutches awaiting knee surgery trying to help the victims. Once they were okay they turned around trying to help me since I was hopping around. They made me sit down and I just played with the child that had been involved. The scariest one I witnessed was several months before that one and involved a drunk driver hitting a car full of teenage girls. I didn't know until I got to the car that she was drunk but once there it was obvious. After several minutes of talking to her, several large men had to restrain her so she would stop trying to leave. Some flipping people, I still stop though. Edit. I want to thank whoever gave me Reddit gold. It doesn't say who but please know it really touched me that you did that. I've been having a rough day and that made me genuinely smile. Thank you. My husband pointed out that I really did verbally exclaim, Oh, we all high-pitched and girly. Really, that is super sweet. Story 27. Mine is a very mild sort of story compared to this one, but it changed my life. Six years ago, I joined a music appreciation group. Just a bunch of amateurs playing piano for each other. At some point, they hosted an event to which they invited a really good professional musician to come and perform. At some point, this musician heard me play. After I finished my piece, he came up to me and invited me to come to a festival at which he was going to perform the following month and to share a set with him. At the festival, he gave me a grand introduction, played a duet with me, and let me play a couple of tunes during one of his sets. That is how my performing career started. After that festival, I started getting invitations to come play at other festivals. Eventually, I started getting solo concerts. I now have a fairly busy performing schedule, all because of one act of kindness. I try to pay it forward by being nice to the other musicians on that scene and by being encouraging to beginners. Also, since I'm also an attorney, I've occasionally helped out some of the musicians on a pro bono basis. Story 28. I was 17, 5, 7, 105 pounds, blonde girl, in the downtown area of Atlanta at night when I ran out of gas, my fuel pump sensor was broken, so I didn't get the little low fuel light on my dash. I pulled right over into a sketchy-looking gas station, the type where the attendant is behind a thick shield of plexiglass and cameras everywhere, and attempted to open the door to my gas tank using a lever on the floor of my car. Turns out the cable connecting the lever to the door was disconnected, so I couldn't get it open. And my cell phone was dead. It was clearly not my day. I went in the gas station and asked the attendant if I could borrow a phone. He told me no because for safety reasons, I can't come behind the counter which I understood because this was a bad side of town. I had been begging him to let me borrow a phone when a group of scary-looking dudes walked in, and he turned his attention from me to them. I quickly walked outside. Luckily, I keep a small roadside kit and tool set in my car for emergencies, thanks dad, and pulled out a flat head screwdriver to try and pry the door open. At this point, I am visibly shaken up. Then I hear the door of the gas station and turn to see one of this big scary guys walking over to me. I froze on the spot. He took off his hat and said, Ma'am, are you having car trouble? Do you need to call someone? And from his pocket, he pulls a phone and hands it to me. He carefully took the tool from my hand and asked if I wanted him to give it a shot. I was speechless, so I just nodded. While I am dialing, he asks, What's a girl like you doing out here on her own? This is a bad area. You need to be more careful. I explained that I had been at work and was driving this way to get on the interstate. My dad picks up and I tell him what happened. He starts asking where I am and I really wasn't sure. The guy asks to speak to my dad, so I hand him the phone and he says, Sir, I got your daughter here at gas station name and name of road off exit. She's just fine, but I wanted to ask if you'll be all right with me removing the door over her gas tank so she can fill it up. All right then, I'll stay here with her till you get here. Home was about 45 minutes away, but he stayed with me the whole time. When my dad got there and thanked the man and he just held up his hands and said, It wasn't any trouble. I would just hope that if my daughter was ever in a similar situation that someone would be so kind to look out for her. And he left. Story 29. I worked in the computer lab at college, and there was a guy who had a crush on me. He was a total creep, however, and his crush was more like stalking. He found out the hours I was working and would always show up about 30 minutes before closing time. He'd pick his computer and sneak stares at me. It made me wildly uncomfortable. One night, right after he started this routine, I announced closing time, and people got up to leave. He did not. He came over to the front of the room, leering and hanging over me, asking me if I had plans for that evening. I said I did. Then he'd ask about other evenings, and I murmured I was busy. 
I said it was time to leave again, but he just wouldn't get the hint. Another guy who I knew casually in the lab was packing his stuff up when he witnessed this. He came up and said loudly, Hey honey, are you ready to go? We've got to get over to so-and-so's house. I made eye contact with him and said, Yes, this casual contact guy was no hottie, not someone I'd ever noticed much, but I was happy to be his date for the night. He escorted me to my car and asked me if that happened much. I told him this guy had been creeping on me for a while, and my new male friend made sure to come into the computer lab every night I worked. And when I was done, he'd walk me to my car and say goodnight. He did this for the whole semester. We're still friends, 15 years later. Creep guy later hacked my school account and sent me offensive and threatening emails. I had to eventually report him to school authorities who threatened him with expulsion from college if he didn't stop. He did. Thankfully, it's been so long I've forgotten even his name. Story 30. When I was 22, I was addicted to crack and candy. My neighbor was an old Polish lady who would bang on the wall when I played music to loud. When things got real bad for me, she must have known I was hurting and not eating because she started ringing my bell and giving me sandwiches she'd made, or bags of bagels and containers of soup and stuff. She would sit with me and we would eat together. I never understood a word she said because she spoke really bad English. She really gave me hope and humanity, which is something I desperately needed at the moment. I always remember her. Also, just celebrated seven years clean and sober. Edit. Thanks for all the nice comments. You guys made me go back and delete all my embarrassing posts and other subreddits. I'm going to go find my old neighbor and thank her. I'll be back with an update. Story 31. When I was around four, my family and I went skiing. My oldest sister and I went up the two-person lift together. I started to slouch in the chair and scooch my bum forward and slip my stomach underneath the bar. A scumbag brain moment as well. Before I knew what was happening, I was slipping under the bar. My sister caught my wrist before I fell, and I ended up dangling by her hand. At this point, we had reached the middle and highest point on the lift and were about 15 meters, 45 feet, off the ground. My sister wasn't strong enough to lift me back up, so we could only wait helplessly for me to slip to certain injury. By this time, they had stopped the lift. A man skied under me and told me to kick my skies off. I was confused and refused at first, but eventually complied. Then he told me to let go. It was a big drop for a four-year-old, but I let go and he flipping caught me. Just like that, no bigs. I was surprised his snow pants could hold his gigantic balls. Anyway, I don't really remember what happened after that. I assume someone from my family thanked him. But if he's reading this, I was the young kid at Cascade Ski Hill in Ottawa, Canada, around 1996. Thanks for saving me from a broken something. Story 32. Awesome stories here. Even if no one reads this, I can't let this opportunity go without mentioning my own. My husband and I have gone through some tough times together, and four years ago, we were at the lowest we'd ever been. When the housing bubble burst and the recession hit hard, we had to give up the house we had worked so hard to buy. It was our pride and joy, and we were devastated, so we decided to move to a new city and start fresh. By the time Christmas came, we had been in our new place for just under a year, and we were still struggling. I was an emotional mess, was only working part-time, and had taken fewer and fewer clients in my small consulting business. I had saved up enough money to buy a nice Christmas dinner for us plus some other groceries for the week, and that was a huge deal since we'd taken to visiting the food pantry when we had no other choice. So we shopped carefully to stay within our budget, and when we got to the register, our card was declined. I'd done the math wrong and tried putting a few items back, but the card would just not work. I found out later that we were charged erroneous fees and our account was negative. All of the groceries I had so carefully planned out had to be put back, and I had no idea what we were going to do for food. I tried hard not to cry, but I had just had enough. We started to leave, embarrassed and brokenhearted, and we must have looked pathetic. The woman behind us in line spoke up and said, Where are you two going? Your groceries are all right here. I told her there was a mix-up with our accounts, and she saw right through it. She said, No, I don't think so. It works just fine. And just like that, she paid for our groceries with her own credit card. Even my husband cried. We hugged her, and she said, Stand up straight. We've all been there. Just remember to do the same for someone else whenever you're able. I've always tried to give a little extra here and there, like buying a meal or two at the grocery store to be donated to needy families during the holidays, but this changed me. The affects reached far deeper than just dinner that night. I learned firsthand how an act of kindness can change someone's perception of the world when all they've known for so long is losing in a hard-fought battle of life. Thank you, Shannon, wherever you are. P.S. We are doing much better now and pass it on as often as we can manage it. Story 33. I like this story a lot. I'm a fairly massive, and I've been a pretend boyfriend a number of times in similar situations. Waiting at the train station, some little slip of the thing puts her arm in mine and starts walking towards the exit. I need you to come with me, okay? That guy has been following me, oh cow. He's like 40, graying hair, and thick build. 
years of manual labor. He's got homemade clothes, fondling what looks like a baby sledge in a denim rucksack. He's got that look that says his mind isn't at all where his body is. We get to the end of the station and wait. It's a while. I'm patient. The guy passes us and pretends to wait about 50 feet away, trying to not be obvious about the fact he's keeping an eye on us. I'm taking mental inventory. I've got steel-toed boots. It's cold, but I have no gloves. Bad person outweighs me by about 40 pounds, but I've got a nearly a foot on him. But that heavy whatever it is he's playing with in his lunch sack has me on edge. Probably weighs a few pounds. Flashlight, maybe. Claw hammer. Mini sledge. A car pulls up. It's some guy. Looks a bit douche bro -y. Ah, the real boyfriend. She's made a call, and here he is. It's all very awkward at the end, when the danger is over and you're just hanging out with a complete stranger. The boyfriend comes over and gives her an escort to the car, like a parent hurting a child who stayed out way too late. Not even a wave, they just fudge off. The old guy loses interest, leaves whatever it was in his satchel, and I see his big meaty hand for the first time in ten minutes. I let go of a breath I haven't even realized I'm holding. He's aware of himself again. I have to go catch my train, I'm late. I leave him there and head off to work. Nobody on the train has noticed anything. Why would they? Totally ordinary, like it never happened. An absurd moment swallowed in time. I've always kind of wondered what happens to those people after the fact. Did any of it mean anything? Or did it just get swallowed up in the sea of weird little events that happened to everyone? So it's nice to know that these little things matter, OP. Thank you for taking the time to share.